The Amazing Mr. Malone. Operator. Operator. Get me the office of John J. Malone. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone. An exciting half hour of mystery starring George Petrie as the lawyer whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. Our locale is the city of Chicago, the time, the present, and the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone's a name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. My hometown is Chicago. Now, there's a spot that offers unlimited possibilities for any lawyer interested in collecting cliches. Tonight, I'd like to submit for your approval, hard work never killed anyone. To illustrate, I give you Willie Nelson. Willie is what is known as a small businessman. He sells newspapers. His favorite spot is the corner in front of the Temple Apartments. He gets a lot of play there. Nor does he mind walking up four flights to make a sale. You've got to admire such fortitude, not to mention endurance. Yeah, Willie's gone places. And right now, his destination is 4C. Who is it? It's me, Miss Morgan. I got your paper. Just a second, Willie. Hiya, Miss Morgan. Come on in. Thanks. You got my racing form? Have I ever let you down? Let's see, where are the entries for Washington Park? Why? You got a sure thing? Oh, you're not kidding. Bright eyes in the first. Oh, that dog. I'm telling you, Willie, I got this from someone who knows. Well, look what he did last time out. Last by four lengths. They were holding him back for this race. That's what you said about Moon Glow on Monday. Well, that was different. Now, look, I want to put 20 on his nose, and in the second race... I'm sorry, Miss Morgan, I can't do it. You can't do what? Can't take any more of your bets. Do you know how much you owe me already? What's the matter, Willie? Don't you trust that me? That ain't the point. You're into me now for 140 bucks. Listen, listen, Willie. If I promise to pay you tomorrow... You said that yesterday. Well, it's just that I forgot to go to the bank. Look, I swear I'll take care of everything tomorrow. You can take it out of my winnings. I'm sorry, Miss Morgan. Honest, I would if I could, but I can't afford to take any more chances. Now, suppose I got picked up for bookmaking. That might I... be a good idea. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Morgan. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear you come in. Next time, I'll send up a flare. You the boy who's been taking my sister's bets? Me? No, no, honest. Get I out of here. Sure, Mr. Morgan, I was practicing. Get. Yeah. You got your nerve on. Give me that racing form. I will not. Didn't I tell you something? Ow. If I ever catch you so much as looking at a dope sheet again, you know what'll happen? It's my life. And a pretty unattractive one. You spend so much time doping the horses, you can't think of business. It's like a drug. Every time you get your hands on a couple Leave of bucks... Leave me alone. I'll let you alone. You talk to your boyfriend yet? Huh? Cal Myers. None of your business. Now, don't get difficult, Faye. Did you talk to the schmo? Yes. What'd he say? He won't do it, Vaughn. You're lying. I give you my word. Don't make me laugh. You didn't sound Cal out yet, did you? I swear. Did you? you? Oh, Why not? No, I was afraid. I told you there was nothing to worry about. <laughs> When are you going to see that character again? Tonight. Well, you better come home with good news. But I don't know what to tell him, Vaughn. Just what I told you to. Now get dressed. We mustn't keep dear Cal waiting. Waiter. Say, say waiter. Uh, yes, Mr. Meyer. Uh, was anybody asking for me? I don't believe so, sir. Well, will you tell the captain if a Miss Faye Morgan yeah. can... Oh, there you are, honey. I, I was getting worried. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm late. Uh, would you care to order now, Mr. Uh, Myers? I'll, uh, I'll have a martini. I, I wish you wouldn't, darling. Huh? I hate to see you drink so much. Never mind, waiter. I'll call you when we're ready to order. Uh, very good, sir. Cal, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to embarrass you. It isn't as though I were a drunk. I didn't say you were, dear. But drinking is a weakness. You start off with one, and the next thing you know... I know, I'm in an alcoholic ward. You're making fun of me. Well, it is kind of funny. I think I'm a prude. And I wouldn't change you for the world. 
Oh, Faye, I, I'm crazy about you. And I'm crazy about you. It'll be something to remember when I'm far away from here. What are you talking about? I'm leaving Chicago tomorrow. But why? I, I can't tell you. Well, I won't let you go. What do you think I want to? Oh, Faye, marry me. What? I mean it. Oh, darling, I'd love to. Then, then why don't you? I, I can't. Don't ask me. But I am asking. I won't let you go. You really want me to stay? Of course. Then get me $50,000. What? The reason I'm leaving Chicago is because of Vaughn. Your brother? Yes. He got mixed up with some bad company. Cow, he gambled. And, and, and he lost 50 grand? Yes. But what's that got to do with you? Well, they'll kill Vaughn if he doesn't pay off. Who does he owe the money to? Maybe I could get my boss to talk to him. Oh, no, no, no. You mustn't let Mr. Lyons do that. Why don't you let Vaughn run away by himself? You don't understand, darling. You're so strong and Vaughn's so weak. He couldn't get by without me. Well, I'm not going to let you ruin your life on account of well, him. Wait. I got an idea. What? I, I know how we can raise the money. We could let your Mr. Lyons sort of loan it to us. <clears throat> What are you talking about? Well, as the accountant for Mr. Lyons Enterprises, you're in charge of the money they take out of the slot machine. So? So you told me they don't deposit the money but once a week. I bet there must be at least $50,000 in the office at a time. Now, look, Oh, they... isn't there? Well, yes, well, but... suppose one night there was a holdup. Are you kidding? What? It isn't as though we're actually stealing. After all, slot machines aren't legal. You realize where that money comes from? Even little children. What's that got to do it's with... It's got the... everything to do. You think I'd let you do this if Mr. Lyons actually earned that money? He's just taking it out of the pockets of the poor. Oh, you're crazy. It... Well, that's the way you feel. No, no, Faye. Don't go. I, I ask you a simple favor. Do you know what Frenchy Lyons would do to me if, if he found out? But he doesn't have to find out. People are robbed every day in the year. You can't help it if one night they happen to pick on you. What do you say, dear? Don't you want me to be Mrs. Calvin Myers? Well... Good. Then we'll consider the whole thing settled. Now, suppose you order yourself a drink. Oh, oh really, darling? I don't mind if you do. Thousand eight hundred forty one, three hundred ninety seven, fourteen hundred sixty five. Are you coming on those figures, Cal? Oh, I, I'll have them in about an hour, Mr. Lyons. You said that at noon. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what's the matter with me. I got a bad headache. Then let it go for tonight. You can do it the first thing in the morning. No, I, I'd rather finish up now. But you may be here till twelve. Well, I, I don't mind. Well, maybe you don't, Cal, but I happen to have an engagement. Well, I I, I can lock up. No, I wouldn't think of you. No, order. really, I, I don't mind at all. I got nothing better to do. What about the safe? I'll I'll take care of everything. All right. Would you like me to send Buzz over with some coffee? No. no I'll be fine. Don't work too hard. Yeah. No, no, I... I just... Hello? Faye. Yes, darling. This this is Cal. I know. Tell, uh... Tell your brother to be here in 15 minutes. <laughs> Honey. Oh, this is... Oh, shaker. Hello, Malone. Well, if it isn't the one and only Frenchy Lyons. Now I know it's true. What? You really are amazing. Can I come in? What is it, business or social? Because if it's business... You have an office in the Prescott building. Say, come to think of it, I have. I ought to take a run over there someday and see what goes. Sit down. Thanks. Join me in a nightcap? Nightcap? Between breakfast and lunch? It's midnight in Hawaii. Oh. What's on your mind, Frenchie? I have a problem, Malone. Haven't we all? Yeah, but mine cost me in the neighborhood of 70000 
That's a nice neighborhood. Well, somebody tapped the till at my office last night. And you got an idea who that somebody is? Yeah. I left a boy named Cal Myers in charge. According to his story, a couple of hoods walked in at 11 o'clock and made him open the safe. But you don't believe it? No. Nope. You're covered by insurance? Mm-mm. Well, my advice to you is to notify the police. Is that all you can suggest? That's all. Won't do. I want to keep this strictly in the family. Well, if you're going to ignore my advice, Frenchie, I don't know why you came here. I'm beginning to think it was a mistake, too. I'm sorry I bothered you, Counselor. Believe me, it won't happen again. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, hundred. Hey, how much did you say I owed you, Willie? Hundred sixty. I thought it was a hundred and forty. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I was thinking of somebody else. (laughs) You're a nice boy, Willie. A little mercenary, but still a nice boy. There you are. Thanks, Miss Morgan. It's a pleasure to do business with you. I'll bet. Well, I I better be getting down to my stand. My customers... What's the matter, Willie? Don't you like me? I was thinking of your brother. Vaughn. Forget it. (gasps) What was that? I don't know. It it seemed to... Hey, there's somebody on the fire escape. Hey! Hey, let me in. Beat it, Willie. Ain't, ain't Beat that, it. Th- sure, Miss Morgan. Anything you say, and thanks for taking care of those IOUs. It's okay. Hey. Wait a minute, will you? Oh, thanks, honey. What's the idea, Cal? Well, I couldn't help myself. Frenchy Lyons is looking for me. Then why did you come here? I didn't have any choice. Faye, we got to blow town. Are you kidding? Well, I'm crazy about Chicago. But, darling, you promised... You said we'd get married. Well, that raises a problem, Mr. Myers. Uh, you listen to me, Vaughn. If it wasn't for you, yeah, I wouldn't... come to think of it, it is my fault. But you see, when I first met Faye, I was carried away. You first met her? Oh, didn't she tell you? We're married. You... You what? Yeah. On October 8th, 1949, to be exact. Well... Ah, you should have seen her in those days, Cal. She was a doll. Shut up. Darling, we mustn't quarrel in front of strangers. Unless he's leaving. No. You're not going to make a chump out of me. Nobody had to. You did it all on your own. Go on, sucker. Blow. No, I'm staying here until... Until what? Come on, get up. Got anything more to say? No. And on your way. And don't slam that door. Well, you were wonderful, Vaughn. You handled that with your customary finesse. Where did that racing form come from? I've got friends. That's not all you've got. What did you do with the dough? Dough? Don't go dull on me. Where'd you put the money? That's for me to know. And you to find out. You don't mean that, Faye. You wouldn't double-cross your one and only. Wouldn't I? Yeah, I guess you would at that. And it's probably just what I deserve. Huh? What do you think you got coming to you? No. No, Vaughn. No, don't. Ah! Yeah? That you, amazing? Who's this? Now, who else would it be? Brooks. But of course. What's on your mind, Lieutenant? Now, that's a pretty silly question. What have I usually got on my mind? Yeah, I should have known. I'm talking about business. Oh. Ever hear of a girl named Faye Morgan? No. Well, you're going to. She was knocked off at 7 o'clock last night. What's that got to do with me? Maybe everything. We grabbed a killer and he wants you to defend him. What's his name? Cal Myers. Cal Myers? Boy who works for Frenchy Lyons? Yeah, tell me something, Counselor. Why is it no sooner we nab somebody, they always scream for Malone? Well, what are you complaining about, Lieutenant? If they didn't, we'd both be out of work. Tell Mr. Myers I'll be over in 15 minutes. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. Now that nice weather is definitely here, you've probably checked through your fishing stuff, given the car an overhaul, and you're ready for some weekending in the country. Well, out of the hundreds of forest fires in America every year, nine out of ten are caused by carelessness. Don't be careless. Don't drop a lighted cigar, cigarette, or pipe ashes. 
Break matches in two before throwing them away. Build your campfire in a sheltered spot and drown it carefully before you leave it. And check the local fire laws before using any fire at all. Our forests are a great natural resource, and protecting them is our responsibility. Remember, only you can prevent a forest fire. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. There's one thing I'll have to say for myself, because if I don't, no one else will. I'm a man of my word. Here I promised Lieutenant Brooks I'd be over in 15 minutes, and I was. It was exactly 2.30 when I walked into Cal Myers' cell. And at 2.31, I was ready to walk out. Now, look, Malone, all I can tell you is that I, I didn't kill Faye Morgan. Now, why does Lieutenant Brooks here think you did? Well, I can't help it if he's an idiot. Well, I've been promoted. He called me an imbecile before. Don't let it go to your head. What kind of a routine do you call this, anyway? Well, you see, Cal, Brooks and I enjoy a very unusual relationship. Yeah, you're both very unusual guys. <laughs> hey, you know, he's good, Counselor. We ought to take him into the act. Now, are you going to get me out of here, Malone? Well, that all depends. Did you kill Faye Morgan? Forgive me for even asking. Would you mind telling me what you had against the girl? Absolutely nothing. Yet the police have a witness who swears she threw you out of her apartment. That was Vaughn. Vaughn? Her husband. <whistles> what are you smirking for, Lieutenant? I knew Faye was married. Well, that makes it even better. You're out of your mind. That's very funny. Is this? No, no, I was just thinking. You work for Frenchy Lyons. So? So someone walked out of his office last night with close to 70 grand. And where'd you pick that up? I got a rumble. What's the connection? You tell us. Look, Malone, whose side are you on anyway? Now, either you want this case or you don't. Well, as long as you put it on that basis, I don't. Let me out, Lieutenant. Sure. So long, Cal. Lots of luck with your new lawyer. Thanks. Don't mention us. Hey, you know something, Malone? Yeah, I wasted a lot of time. You know, it's lucky you didn't go any further. You'd have ruined your record. This is one boy you'd never get off. Are you insinuating I take only the easy ones? Oh, heavens, no. You don't think I can get them off, huh? I know you can't. Well, if this is what you wanted, Lieutenant, you couldn't have planned it better. Go on back and tell Myers I've changed my mind. Your evening paper here, all the latest new... Your paper, mister? Uh, you got a race in form? Oh, you betcha. You wouldn't happen to know how Strongheart did in the fourth of Hollywood. He won. Paid sixteen eighty. Were you in on him? No, I, uh, I couldn't find a bookie. Well, any time you're looking for a little action, let me know. Well, that's good to know, uh... uh Willie. Willie Nelson. Well, it's nice meeting you, Willie. You look like a pretty sharp boy. I don't miss much. I'll bet you Please. don't. Didn't you discover Faye Morgan's body... Are you a cop? No, but I heard that when you went up to deliver the papers to her apartment this morning, you found it. Look, her. mister, I got, I got to get back to my stand. Well, ten bucks by a couple of minutes of your time? No. How about twenty? I'm sorry, but I got... Wait a minute. Don't I know you from someplace? I don't know. Do you? What did you say your name was? I didn't say, but it's Malone. Malone? John J. Sure, you're that lawyer, ain't you? Well, I don't know if I'm that lawyer. Say, I know all about you, Mr. Malone. My mother always wanted me to be a lawyer. Yeah, better you should stick to your newspapers. Now, about that 20 bucks. Oh, I, I wouldn't take any money from you. It's a privilege to cooperate. Ask, ask me anything you want. What kind of a girl was this Faye Morgan? Okay, if you're a horse. Huh? She was nuts about the nags. Oh. Well, who do you think killed her? Well, Mr. Myers, of course. Why do you say, of course? Well, the cops grabbed him. You saw Cal Myers come out of her building? Sure, right after Mr. Morgan went up to see you. When did Morgan leave? Oh, I couldn't say. I didn't see him. But you're positive Myers left before he did? Absolutely. I saw him come out myself. Of course, that don't mean he couldn't have come back again. Wouldn't you have noticed him? No, not if he went in through the fire escape like he did the first time. He used the fire escape? Yeah. And believe me, he had a right to. That Mr. Lyons was plenty sore. Lyons? Don't tell me he was here, too. Yeah, he was looking for Myers. You tell that to the cops? They didn't ask him. Yeah, serves him right. Well, this has been a pleasure, Willie. Let's do it again real soon. Right now, I gotta go do it to Mr. Lyon. Don't misunderstand me, Malone. I'm tickled to death you dropped by. But I still don't understand your reason. Well, I'm representing Cal Myers. Who? Cal Myers. He used to work for you. I'm sorry I can't place the name. Well, just to refresh your memory, when you came to my apartment this morning... I morning, came to your apartment? Next, you'll tell me nobody waltzed off with 70 grand of yours last now, look, night. look, Malone, 
You sure you feel all right? Well, if I don't, I know who's responsible. Now, the way I see it, Frenchy, you knew Cal Myers was sweet on Faye Morgan. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, you probably figured she and her husband wound up with your dough. You're out of your mind. And why were you looking for Cal? Who said I was? I have it on what Winchell would call excellent authority. As a matter of fact, this same reliable source puts you on the scene right about the time Faye Morgan was murdered. You disappoint me, Malone. I thought you were smart. Yeah, I guess I must be pressing too hard. Sorry I let you down, Frenchy. Uh, those things happen. Good night, Counselor. I uh, think you'll be able to find your own way out. Yeah? Let me talk to Mr. Malone, please. Who's calling? Willie Nelson. Uh, This is Malone. What's up, Willie? Oh, I uh, think I got a lead for you. Remember, you asked me about uh, Vaughn Morgan? Don't tell me he came back to the apartment. Yeah, about five minutes ago. He uh, wanted the key to his wife's room. You get it? No, the super wouldn't give it to him. Where's Morgan now? He's hanging around the entrance. Listen, Willie, you can't let me down. You must be on good terms with the superintendent. Well, he hit me for 108 bucks on a long shot yesterday. And he ought to feel real friendly today. Get the key and go up to the room. I'll be over as fast as I can. Just a second, Mr. Malone. Come on in. I could... Hello, Willie. What are, you, what are you doing here, Mr. Mork? You wouldn't believe it if I told you. You know, the cops won't like it if they find out. Who's going to tell them? You gave strict orders. No, no, no one was supposed to come in here. You're here? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for a friend. I'll try to keep out of your way. What happened to my wife's grip, Willie? I don't know. I guess the police must have taken it. What's that under the bed? You better not touch that, Mr. Morgan. Pull it out. No, no, I will not. I don't know why Faye thought you were so accommodating. I can't get you to do anything. Oh, now, listen, Mr. Morgan, I'm telling Maybe you... Maybe if you... I were to slip you something, you'd knock yourself out for me. <laughs> Taxi! Taxi! Trouble, mister? Yeah, you never can find a hack when you need one. Ain't it the truth? Can I give you a lift? Huh? I got a new car around the corner. Maybe you'd like to get off your feet for a while. Look, chum, I don't know what your game is. Tiddly winks. What's yours, Morgan? How do you know my name? You're a celebrity. Wasn't your wife murdered? Who are you? Nobody you know, but I think you know my boss. Your boss? Yeah, a fellow named Frenchy Lyons. Oh. It's waiting for you in my car. Would you like to talk to him? No, thanks. Come on, Morgan. Get smart. I'm not keeping his hand in my pocket to protect the manicure. Where, where do we go? Just around the corner. I hope that grip isn't too heavy for you, but you look like a big, strong boy. Look, fella, I'll make your proposition. I wish I had the time to hear. How do you make out, Buzz? Uh, look. Well, I'm glad to see you, Vaughn. Get in. Listen, Lyons. I'll be glad to. I expect to learn a great deal. All right, Buzz. Find us a nice, quiet spot where Mr. Morgan can talk to his heart's content. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Sunday on NBC, Rosalind Russell and Burgess Meredith co-star in Biography, the Theater Guild on the air's final broadcast of the season. First produced on Broadway by the Theater Guild in 1932, Biography deals with a second-rate female portrait painter whose life story, about to be published, might embroil a number of her male subjects, particularly one with political ambitions. This comedy featuring two of your favorite Hollywood stars is sure to be a must in your Sunday listening lineup. Sunday also means another visit with the owners of that world-renowned dream house, Mr. and Mrs. Blandings. The Blandings, as portrayed by Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, are just average people with a better-than-average knack of getting themselves into situations that mean just one thing, a load of laughs for you, the radio listener. So remember, Theater Guild on the air and Mr. and Mrs. Blandings... Sunday over this station. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. A 
boy named Kipling once wrote a poem entitled If, and now there's a song with the same name. I ought to use it for my own personal theme. If I hadn't stopped off with Lieutenant Brooks, and if I had gone immediately to see the obliging newsboy Willie Nelson after his phone call, things might have turned out differently. But there's that big if again. Anyway, when the lieutenant and I walked into Faye Morgan's hotel room, Willie was still waiting. Get some water, Malone. Is he? No. Someone only did a crouper on his skull. Uh, yeah, he's coming too now. How about that water? Sure. Oh, never, never mind, Lieutenant. I'm all right. I thought the first thing they always said was what happened. I don't have to ask. I was here. Suppose you tell us, Willie. Let me up and out. Oh, oh, oh. On second thought, maybe I'd better park where I am. Who did it? Mr. Morgan. What do you want? I don't know. Must have been after the bankroll. Well, you're crazy. We took this place apart. Well, it was a grip under the bed. Is it there now? Nope. And Faye must have stashed the money in there. Now, you're nuts, Malone. There was nothing in that bag. I examined it personally. You didn't look hard enough. Oh, I'm sure I did, Malone. Hey, Lieutenant, look who's here. Well, hello, Frenchie. Come on in. I have a couple of friends waiting outside. Would you mind? Not at all. The more the merrier. Buzz? I assume you want him, too. Huh? Me along. Well, well, old home week. You know, we've been looking for you, Morgan. Where you been? Buzz and I sort of took him under our wing. And from the looks of him, I say you must have flown pretty high and dropped him. Accidents will happen. Won't they? But now that we're all here, suppose we call the meeting to order. Uh, correction, Mr. Chairman. We're not all here. What about your client, Cal Myers? Well, he's accounted for. Will the secretary read the minutes? May I have the floor? The chair recognizes Mr. Lyons. I move we dispense with this charming piece of whimsy and get down to business. Yeah, I second the motion. You opposed, Vaughn? Uh -huh. I think he means no. Willie? Don't mind me. Mr. Lyons. There's a problem, gentlemen. I think we should all give our immediate consideration. You mean the murder of Faye Morgan? I don't consider that a problem, Malone. Oh, uh, then you know who killed her. No, and frankly, I don't care. What concerns me is the return of $70,000. Well, that's a mercenary attitude, Frenchy. Here, a beautiful young thing has been violently put to death, and all you're interested in is... Money. All right. Help him out, Willie. Huh? Tell him where you hit it. Where I hit it? Ah, uh, look, what are you getting at, Malone? Who do you think killed Faye Morgan? Him? Uh-huh. You're crazy. I'm surprised at you, Willie. Didn't anyone ever tell you you can't get away with murder? You're supposed to be a smart bookie. And that's one big tip you overlook. Coffee, gentlemen? No, thanks. Right. Say, uh, Malone. Oh, Lieutenant, why does this have to happen every week? Well, you think I enjoy it? If it wasn't for you, you know where I'd be? Yeah, right behind the eight ball. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Well, what do you want to know? Just one thing, Malone. What made you decide on Willie Nelson? Well, it all came down to button, button. Who's got the button? And if you know the game, you'll see Willie was a cinch to be it. I don't see why, Malone. No one else had Frenchie's money, and it's obvious Faye Morgan wasn't killed until she divulged where she hit it. Well, her husband might have had the dough. If he had, he'd never gone back to the hotel and run the risk of being picked up by Lyons and company. No, Brooks, it had to be Willie. He had the best position of them all. He was right on top of every play. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about your client, Cal Myers? What about him? Well, how'd you know he didn't have the money? That's easy. If he had... I would have gotten it, and you wouldn't be stuck for this check. Good night, Lieutenant. Ever hear the story of the boy who was bored with it all until he bought himself a gun? From then on, he got a big bang out of life. I'll tell you all about him next week, so why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. George Petrie was starred as John J. Malone with Larry Haynes as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Gene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on a character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters in this story were entirely fictional and any resemblance to persons living or dead is entirely coincidental. Fred Collins speaking. The amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from New York. Stay tuned for The Man Called X, next over most NBC stations.